<laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hey Chris, I have a question. Um, are we are we live yet? Okay, never mind. I'll ask you later. <laughs> it was just about the computer, so it's fine. Are we good? Okay. Okay. Ooh, it's as long as Google doesn't crash again, we'll be fine. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was like very not very cool that that happened. Yeah, it was a little a little a little nerve wracking for people. How long was it out for? <laughs> Is there anybody who we don't have? Is Travis? I don't see Travis and I don't see Rebecca Hopper. Okay, what about us? So we have. One, two, three, four, five. So six of us. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. Um, are we good, Chris? Okay. Um, we'll get started. Nancy, do you want to read the public input? Sure. <clears throat> the first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting, if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel matter cannot be made during public input and the click on the link in the top of the agenda if you have a comment to come to the meeting okay so currently the there is top no public of the input. agenda if you have a comment okay. to come to the meeting okay um all right so the minutes of the 10th uh, of the 10th Did you guys want to table them until next time just because you just got the or did you get the minutes um there is a link in that agenda I, if everybody else i um does every did everyone get my email with the agenda yeah i got mine so i didn't but i'll open it real quick So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and is I don't see any issues with it. Okay. So this is Joanne. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the December 10th meeting. I'll second it. This is Dancy. And can we do a verbal all in favor? I'm trying to think if I can see everybody. Um, I think I can. Um, Stephanie, Nancy, Lynn, Lynn, you're there. I just want to make it. Okay. Can we do a, a hands if, if we're all um, in favor? <laughs> there you okay. go. Good. <laughs> um, okay. 
so financial summary. Sure. Did everybody have a chance to look at the financial summary? I know um, last month, Denise Van Campen went through this a little bit in more detail. <clears throat> so just checking to see if there are any questions about this um, month's for ending November 30th. I would say because we just got it, maybe is this something that we can table and take a look at next time? Sure. Yep. Uh, unless people, unless we want to take a minute, I'm happy to take a minute and look it over. It's only, it's just one page, right? Correct. What's up to you? You guys make up. Yeah. Um, well, I guess why don't, why don't we all take a look and then if somebody wants to table it because they need more time, um, we can do that. Otherwise, We'll see if there's any questions. Audra, is there anything notable on here that we should be paying attention to? Yep, there there isn't anything notable. Nothing is is popping out for us. Okay. Everything is sort of where it normally would be. Yes. Yeah. Percentage wise, it's all falling in line with the way that the year and the school year plays out. So fiscal year and school year. Yep. Is this something that we have to make a motion on? Nope. Okay. It was, it's just to keep you updated. Does anyone have any questions it, on? Well, I just have a question. So if, if somebody who's watching the meeting wants to see this, can they do that? Is there a link to this for the public to see? Uh, the will be in the agenda, right? It's in the agenda, but that, but again, that didn't, but we can put that on the public and I can put it yeah. in the minutes of the meeting. So that, that people yeah, I think we probably should. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. a great yeah. point. Yeah. 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 Nice point. Got it. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments on the, Financial summary? No. no. All right. Um, all right. Let's go to our updates. Sure. So we have Amy here um, again this week. Just we're going to get some updates on how the week has gone as far as cases and in, in the different schools, and then we'll kind of go into our attendance and some other things like that. So Amy, do you want to begin? Unmute myself. Okay. So I broke down the cases that we were dealing with this week into what seemed like the most sense coming out of my mouth tonight. So as far as cases that were not in school during their infectious or exposure period, there was one. So so this case won't count towards any of our school numbers at all because they weren't here during both of those periods. Uh, we had three cases that were in school during their exposure period, but they were not infectious while they were in school. So what that means is that they will count as a number towards the school they were assigned to, but we didn't have to do any contact tracing with those cases because they weren't in school while they were infectious. We had two cases that were in school during their infectious period. So we did have to do contact tracing, uh, notified close contacts, and then those classes were moved to remote learning this week. And then we had two cases that were in school during their infectious period. Uh, we did contact tracing, we notified close contacts, but we did not need to move them to remote learning because we're already here. So that was helpful. And I did talk to one of the representatives from uh, the CDC today and of note, because the middle school students and the high school students, uh, grades six through 12 are in the physical high school building on their end, they're counting them all towards the high school building. Mm -hmm. But with our correspondences, we're gonna be as specific as we can, as we have been breaking it down, you know, if we have a four or five student or staff member, we delineate it's the Noble Middle School physical building, but the four or five grade level. So for us, we'll break it down that way, but just know that on the CDC's end of it, they're counting six through 12 being at the high school building. Okay. Okay. 
Well, I want to say nice job getting to today. <laughs> I know. I was actually, that first week, I'm like, all right, I know we're going to make it this week. And then last week was a little bit of a gamble. But yeah, we did. We made it. I feel like there's a lot to be said for the planning that you guys are doing and executing to say that, you know, so far when we've chosen to go remote, it's been on our, like, our decision, our uh, district's decision versus being forced to make any changes. So kudos to you guys. Yeah. And we did have a statewide Maine school nurses meeting yesterday, and there was a CDC representative there, and they've echoed that. Um, like in the beginning when we thought like three was the magic number and three we had to shut down a building it's not the case anymore they're really saying as long as you can keep up with cleaning and staffing you may remain open they're really not telling schools you need to shut down great and are there any um, are there any other schools like at least in the county or sort of southern Maine that are do you feel like most of the schools are operating in a similar way to us um, or are there any that are having to kind of change their tune? Like, how do you feel like the other districts are doing? Um, from what I can see through chatter on the school nurse listserv, um, I feel like every school kind of set up the best they thought that they needed to do. Um, I, I feel like our cohorting has been pretty superior and has helped us a lot uh the distancing measures that we did i just I, I don't know i feel like we we uh we followed the recommendations to a t where other schools um may not have and kind of did their own thing um i'm not quite sure uh school to school but like we we've, we've really we've done a great job hmm. cool congratulations that's great <clears throat> i think one thing that i would um say to to that question, Denise, is that some of our neighboring districts right now have made decisions to go remote to Monday and Tuesday where they hadn't before, but they're getting an influx of cases as well. Mm -hmm. There are our neighboring districts that are, are looking at that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so I'll just, I'll keep going. Um, this week for attendance, uh, for staff, we had 95% um, was the lowest amount of staff in attendance, and then our highest has been 98%. So those are tremendous numbers. Still, we're looking at really strong numbers. Um, for students, for the buildings, 86% um, was the lowest number of attendance in a building, and the highest um, has been 98% as well. So those are still very good, uh, strong numbers especially kind of this time of year when you're looking, you know, at the holidays and things coming up. Um, so that's that's not as unusual um, as it could be with everything going on. And our school, just for updates on school nutrition, uh, we are working on getting our um, bags ready to go for pickup on Tuesday um, for food or during vacation for those that have signed up for that. So they're, um, we're working on that and starting tomorrow in full force. Today was a little bit of a glitch to that as far as the weather and not being able to access the building, but yeah. very confident that everything's gonna get done on time and we'll be all set for that. Um, transportation, uh, we did not send our students to SRTC this morning. And um, the plan is if they're open tomorrow and the roads are clear and everything is good, we will send our students to SRTC tomorrow morning. Um, hmm. that, has, that has really worked out well for us when we um, talked to Sanford about the fact that we were going to go remote for four days. Um, we, it wasn't, it was prevent more of like a proactive move on our part. So they were very comfortable with our students attending. Um, in person because they know, we all know that some of those classes really need to be in person for, to do that work. Um, today was a snow day, um, but you know, a traditional snow day for that. But um, other than that, they'll be going Friday, Monday and Tuesday. Our athletics um, is, we're continuing in yellow um, for, the, for the county. So that means that we can't 
have um, that kind of in-person practicing right now. So we're continuing to have our coaches check in remotely with students and give them um, daily kind of um, exercises, continuing that from last week. Um, and again, I just talked about the attendance, which, which, is, which is strong right now. Um, and I think th that's it for the updates. I have one question. Sure. So, um, I did have somebody mention to me, kids, <clears throat> special education kids that are doing remote, are they receiving their services like if they're Title I or if they're speech or occupational therapy and all that stuff, are they still getting those services remotely? Yep. They are. Yep. And so like if they're, if it says like in their IEP, you know, three days a week math or whatever it is, they're getting it three days a week? They are, yep. The, the case managers are working with families individually and they're reaching out and uh, we have ed techs that also provide some supports as well. Mm -hmm. And I know the OT, the PT, that's a little harder, but they're doing their best yeah. to try to do their, I mean, some of it they're doing, I know the PT in particular is is online doing remote, you know, really? sort of stuff, yep, with kiddos, mm -hmm. yep. And are those like um, a breakout from regular classes? Like, how does that work from a schedule standpoint? That's Some exactly what happens. happens. Yeah, yeah, they get pulled out from. It's it's just it's a similar pullout situation where they'll set up a separate um, Google Meet time with the kiddos, and if even if it's if they're in their in their regular classroom setting, they may have to they work with the teachers though to try not to pull them out during the group times and things like that, but. They set up individual times and work it with their with the parents, basically. Hmm. It's quite an orchestration, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a, a question that's sort of similar to that about multiple pathways, and I know they do a lot of hands-on, um, you know, sort of creative learning. How how have they been doing? Um, you know, I know everyone's getting creative right now, but any are there any sort of updates on how that program is and um you know just how it's working in this setup well they did have to go remote so that did impact some of um some of the projects or the, or the work that they've done more of the in-person piece um mm -hmm. so they are still um you know coming off of that mm -hmm. um, so sue i don't know if you want to talk a little yeah, bit so more about they've also um they've been doing sort of you know, we talked about last week where certain students are be coming in on Wednesdays when they wouldn't typically be in the building. Um, the multiple pathways teachers have have actually sort of developed a curriculum for Wednesdays and Thursdays for their students to come in, um, even though it would not be their typical normal day to come in. Um, Thursday oh. in particular, because Wednesday is a typical uh, multiple pathways day, but they've also had some special um, services i guess we would say on thursdays as well and then there's a ton of individuality with that group and they also do a lot of individual sort of just check-ins with students um it is harder no question mm -hmm. you no know, it's just harder because the it's easier to um sort of fade into the darkness of remote for students who are struggling anyway so on that sort of that outskirts kind of piece but I think the staff themselves are really working hard to maintain those connections as best they can. Yeah. So, yep, we're working against the stream all the time. Yep. But they're doing a great job. Hmm. Thanks. Sure. And if you want, we could set up a time for those guys to come in and have a little conversation with us in uh, after the new year. I would love that. Once this twenty twenty thing gets out of our way, let's go on to new and fun things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I would. I would. I would love that. Okay. I'm sure we can do that. And I think honestly, we could have Susan come in and talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, even a, just a ten minute little conversation about what special ed is doing, so that you get a feel for that. That's fine. We're we're happy to do that because this is definitely what you ever what you ever thought you knew is totally different than what what's happening. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, any other questions on the updates? 
from anyone? No, uh, I don't think so. Um, do we have any hires or? We do have a hire. We have Aaron Frazier, who um, is being recommended for Knowlton's, um, the Knowlton School as a special education teacher for the remainder of the school year. Uh, we've just had some um, shifts over there and we need to um, hire an additional teacher just again for the remainder of this year um, so that we can continue our successful programming. Erin is coming from Compass Behavioral Health. She's been there since um, 2014. Um, she has a bachelor's of science and some extensive work in applied behavioral analysis. Mm -hmm. um, and she is the, the top candidate from our special education director and assistant directors. All right, do we need, we need to make a motion? Yeah. Yes. Does someone wanna do that? I'll make the motion. This is Nancy that we hire Aaron Frazier. And this is Joanne, I'll second it. Um, all in favor? Uh, I got, I don't know if everyone's on the, the email list from the Department of Education, uh, if I don't know if it's part Department of Education or the, the School Management Association, but with the list of um, shortages, teacher shortages, <laughs> they're very long. It's every, it's every single subject area is now I, all. I was reading through it. I was like, hmm, I think that just about covers it. Yeah. You know, in the old days, if you were an ELA teacher or a social studies teacher, you're a dime a dozen. Now it's a targeted needs area. They're all targeted needs. Yeah. Hmm. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. Crazy. So, well, there's been so many retirements too in the last couple of years, massive amounts of teachers. So, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, um, just sorry, go ahead. Amy, no, sorry. Amy um, also wanted to update us, and I, we've forgotten she texting me thank god for texting right um about the notification for cases next week while we're out on break you might as well know the pain that we're going through go ahead amy yeah so <laughs> no I, for you yeah so we talked about how we would do that um starting the 23rd when we're supposed to be on break uh we didn't want to have to do roll in people who sh are shouldn't be working during those hours and hopefully because we have these days leading up to it we won't have to notify families of positive close contacts on the 24th and the 25th if in case we do run into that situation we came up with the plan of putting out um, a messenger uh, like audra has been doing all along with a more specific letter saying if your child was in school on this date and they belong to this classroom or they take this bus, please consider yourself a close contact. It would have all the same information. It would just prevent us having to roll in administrators in their building nurses to making six, 12, 35 phone calls on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and that following weekend. And what about, um... Like, would you still be sending out, you know, a potentially daily email whenever, like the emails that we send out when there were, say, two people who tested positive but weren't in the infectious time, or can we lump those together and send them out at the end of the week if they if there wasn't any? Yeah, I think we'd probably lump them together in one letter. Right. <laughs> Are you, does it make sense to um maybe notify people in advance that over the holidays this like basically i know there's some parental members of my household and there's only two of us here and it's not me uh who does not <laughs> read those emails but will ask me if he needs to read them so i don't i'm wondering if it's worth it to send out one sort of before the holidays to say this is how we're going to handle it so please do read your emails we actually have a newsletter going out either tomorrow or Monday. And okay. in, in the newsletter, it does talk about the change just for the shift of during break. 
Yeah. Okay. And if you um, if you can maybe send me some of that language and and I'll post it on a couple of the parent Facebook pages yeah. too, um, to just help get that out there. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. a great idea. Thank you. It's going to look a little, it is going to look a little different because it's going to be the con the close contact letter that goes out. So we'll just add a paragraph in there about the specificity of the, the classroom or the building or a bus. And then the information families need to know for close contact information. So okay. it will look a, t a bit different than the ones that we've been sending have looked like. Okay. And then what is their, do they have an obligation then to report in to you? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We're going to be checking our emails throughout. Um, and, you know, parents have been great about, they've been the first ones to actually call us and tell us if my son or daughter tested positive, as opposed to us getting a phone call from the CDC. I think that's only probably happened two, three times, maybe. Um, so just know that, you know, we're checking our emails. Please reach out. Well, I meant and more of the people that like, if if you read that email and say, oh, okay, my child is on bus, whatever, like do, they don't have to get in touch with you for any reason. They just know to quarantine or get tested. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We had a lot of great communication during Thanksgiving break from families all the way through, just letting us know, emailing us or calling us and leaving us messages that somebody's, you know, was tested positive or their children had symptoms or um, pieces like that. So we are gonna just continue that, com our communication out during break, just really encouraging as much information as we can get because it's really gonna help us in the long run getting back in for January 11th and, yep. you know, moving ahead, so. Yeah. How will we, how and when will we make a decision if we need to stay remote another week? How is that, as a board, how do we, um, like, is it going to be sort of if the week before then we just have too many cases or what, what um, like, I actually don't know when we're going to meet next, but. We have, like, next, yeah, the next week. The seventh, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's a really key, that would be a key meeting. And that would give us several days to collect information to bring to you about um, case updates, what's going on. I mean, because you'll be, we'll be sending out those letters, but Amy will be able to to give us a quick summary um, okay. similar to how she right. did it. Yeah. So if we, if you guys feel like at that point there's just too many, then that are still pulling in or whatever, that you'll make a recommendation to us that we stay remote for another week or whatever. That, right. And we'll do that during that seventh meeting. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who's that is. Oh, are you Sorry, it's loud in here. <laughs> how do I? I don't know how to mute myself on this now. <laughs> it's funny. Laundry. So just some other business, if that's okay. Um, I just forgot what I, I was going to talk about the newsletter. We have a newsletter going out and what we decided to do with this newsletter is just take a moment to recognize um, just the amount of community support that we've had since last March. So we've got some things about, um, let's see, the backpack program. We've compiled just the donations that we've had to the backpack program. We've talked a little bit about that. Um, we've done a piece on our school nutrition and how many meals have, have been provided. And um, then the digital libraries that we have been able to receive um, as part of the Corona Relief Funds, which is very exciting. And then we spotlight um, this time, just the middle school is doing a very nice little wellness activity. So those are some of the things that we are highlighting in our newsletter. Um, and w we had very good, strong feedback from the, the newsletter that we did on, we, it was literacy focused, the last one, and we had a lot of really, really strong feedback yeah. on um, just the amount of information that was in there and a really good understanding of what, you know, was happening. You could see what was happening and how everything progressed up through the, up through the grade level. So that was really nice. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is, you know, being in the, in, having the office in the high school really affords us the opportunity to 
to see the high schoolers and how that's going. And they are just, I, I just have to give a hats off to everybody at the high school because our students are doing such an amazing job with it, even walking down the hallway. I mean, like, I just think about the picture in from Georgia this summer yeah. when we were in yeah. class and it was, you know, you saw that picture. That is not happening at Noble. No. And they are doing such an amazing job in the cafeteria everywhere they go and just hats off to them and the staff and it's it's really really fun to see good that's great thank you do we have any other others anything else no so um i do have one question because we're going to meet again January 7th mm -hmm. and do uh, maybe at that point we can start talking timetable for budget. Um, you know, just some initial conversations. I'm not sure. Um, I can never remember exactly when that starts, but it, it's I know coming. it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, maybe on the seventh, we can start to look at a calendar and just to kind of, sketch out what we what we think we're looking ahead at the facilities and finance committee has met and there is a timeline that we walk through with um everybody on the committee that seems to um be favorable at this point in time so we can certainly share that at the next meeting okay great and remind me who's on that joanne and travis okay and then AJ Dufort from the high school, Tina Harding from uh, elementary, Heather LaFrance, Kevin Moore, Denise Van Campen, Sue and me. Okay. Okay. It's quite an elite group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, anything else? No? Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. And I really do want to say again, I, it's the middle of January. Well done. I yeah. mean, December, <laughs> it's not January, but it will be. Um, but yeah, seriously, you know, Audra and Sue and everybody else, Amy and all of the building administrators, I, I cannot um, give enough respect to the job that everybody's doing. And I, I don't know that anybody thought that we would be here at Christmas break, you know, still moving along. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. This is Joanne. I'll second it. This is Nancy. All right. Thank you. All in favor. Merry Christmas, everybody.